In this series of videos, we've been talking about knowing God. Who is God? What is God? What is God made of? We've discovered some things about God, like He is spirit. And we talked about spirit versus matter. We talked about pantheism, and we answered the question, is God the universe? And we concluded that no, the universe is a creation of God, but God is not in the universe, in the sense that the universe is made of Him. So we're going to continue talking about the being of God, the nature of God, the attributes of God. So we're going to talk about omnipresence, which is one of the attributes of God. Any theology book you pick up and read is going to have a section about omnipresence. But it's highly misunderstood. And because quantum mysticism is becoming so popular in our culture, I feel that we need to address this. Because the New Age movement relies so heavily on concepts within the field of quantum mechanics, I want to make sure that we don't make the mistake they are making by saying the universe is part of God's being. And if you just vibrate at the right frequency, you can tap into this divine energy. Now, if you remember from the Quantum God video I posted, the universe is not made out of quantized pieces of God's being. Quantized means the smallest indivisible unit of measuring of energy or whatever you're talking about. Like light, for example, the smallest piece of light you can talk about is a photon. Okay, that's a quantized piece of light, if you will. Now, the universe is not made out of tiny pieces of God or quantized pieces of God's Spirit. And it would be a mistake to think that vibrating at higher frequencies does not put you in tune with divinity. Okay, prayer is the only way to get in tune with divinity. Worship and fellowship with God and meditation and all the spiritual disciplines that I talk about, that is how you stay in tune with divinity. So this is very important to understand, because if you understand that God is a personal being and not just in the cosmic forces of the universe or energy, then you'll better understand how to know God and how to interact with this person. So let's address God's omnipresence and see if we can make sense of it. Now, omnipresence is defined as God being present in the totality of his being at each point in space. All right? That doesn't mean that God is space. It means that He's present at each point. There's a difference. To be present at each point is not the same thing as being each point. Now, here's what the psalmist David wrote. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light will become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. This is Psalm 139, verses 7 through 12. So when we talk about God's omnipresence, we are not talking about God being smeared all over the universe to make up the substance of the universe. That is pantheism, which we reject. It's not an accurate description of Almighty God. Now, it's easy to see how quantum mystics and the New Age movement connect quantum mechanics with a divine energy that permeates all of reality, and they call this omnipresence. But we need to correct this thinking. So let me explain how this connection is being made. We talked about the Big Bang in my video about proving God's existence using the Kalam cosmological argument. So I'm not going to go too much into it, but just to make sure that we're all on the same page, let me briefly explain Big Bang cosmology. You see, physicists believe the universe started as a single point, smaller than an electron. I know that's crazy to think about, but imagine everything in the universe all packed into an incredibly dense region smaller than an electron. So you can think of the universe as kind of like a seed. No matter how big the tree is, everything that was needed to make that tree that size was in that seed. And it's the same with our universe. When God spoke the universe into existence, He released a word like a seed. You see, God speaks material. He doesn't just speak and move air molecules. 
He speaks and creates air molecules. You understand? So when God spoke the universe as a word seed, everything was packed into that seed that was smaller than an electron. And because everything in the universe started from a single point, everything in the universe started as one ingredient or the original substance. At the moment the universe began, there were no electrons, there were no atoms, there were no quarks, there were no pieces of matter. There was no gravity, there was no light, no Higgs field, no nothing. There was only one particle and one force, and this one particle and one force were not God. It was not part of God's essence or being. In a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, expansion began and other elementary particles began to form. But here's the thing, just because they were different particles, they still all came from the same substance or the same source. Therefore, all of these particles were made of the same stuff, and they remain entangled at the smallest of scales, at the quantum level. But again, this stuff is not God. It was a creation or an invention of God. It came from his mind, but it isn't God. I mean, think about a builder who builds a home. He uses stone, cement, wood, and all of these materials to build a home. But none of those materials are him. They didn't come from his being. They are different substances. Now, yes, at the atomic level, you could say everything's the same. But the point is, the universe doesn't have to be made of whatever God is. I don't know where we got this idea that God has to be the universe. No, God created the universe to be a cosmic temple to live in with his children. The temple does not have to be God or made of God. Now, quantum entanglement is the idea that matter and energy are connected or entangled at the quantum level. Even if particles are light years apart, or they can even be at opposite ends of the universe. They can somehow be intertwined and interact with each other instantaneously. But for this to happen, the information must travel from one particle to the other faster than light. Now this goes against Einstein's theories of relativity that state nothing, not even information, can travel faster than light. But here's the thing. Does the information actually travel if the particles were separated by each other by space, then we would be correct in saying that information was traveling. But according to quantum mechanics, the particles are not even separated. Even though they occupy different places in space-time, at the quantum level, they're connected. They're still touching, as if their essence is spread throughout each point in the universe. As Brian Greene wrote, they act like a pair of star-crossed lovers who are forced to separate and live independently forever, but who continue not only to know each other's moves, but also to imitate the other's activity for the rest of their days. Physicists use the term localized to describe events that take place at a particular moment in time in a particular region of space. We use words like here and there to describe how things exist in our physical universe. But according to quantum physics, at the quantum level, there really is no such thing as locality. There is no here, there is no there. Even particles that exist at opposite ends of the universe can exist in a non-local state and somehow interact with each other without information being sent through space. This strange phenomenon is similar to the omnipresence of God. But be careful because similar does not mean the same. One of the experiments that demonstrates the strange phenomenon of quantum entanglement is the double slit experiment. Now, if you haven't watched my other videos, let me explain really quick how this works. The experiment was performed with electrons or photons fired at a barrier, and they put two slits between the gun firing the particles and the detector screen. The particles actually behave as waves, and they go through both slits at the same time. The physicists didn't expect this. They expected two lines to form on the detector screen because they had two slits. So like if you were shooting BBs through two slits, you would expect the detector screen behind it to show where the BBs were hitting in two lines. But in these experiments, they discovered that there were more than two lines forming on the screen. 
which show that the particles are behaving as a wave, creating a disturbance pattern. And just to be sure that what they were observing was real, they only fired one electron at a time and were amazed to see that the particle went through both slits at the same time. That's like a ghost. So what we normally think of as a point-like piece of matter actually behaves as a ghost-like particle, as a wave, when it's not being looked at. So to say that an electron or photon or any other elementary particle can behave as a wave and a particle means that a single atom can be spread out through space, thus giving matter the ability to exist everywhere at once. Suddenly the idea that the Holy Spirit can live in the hearts of millions of Christians around the world, that doesn't seem so crazy anymore, does it? That doesn't sound spooky or like religious nonsense. If physical matter can behave in such a ghost-like fashion through the reality of quantum entanglement, why is it so difficult to believe that a spirit being like God possesses the attribute of omnipresence? Now I want to present one more idea before we close this. The Apostle Paul made a remarkable statement in Ephesians 2, 6, and here's what he wrote. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Now, Paul is talking about a present and future reality. The biblical writers often spoke of the promises of God as being present in our lives now. Paul was saying that we are seated with Christ now, even though we're walking around on the earth. We are entangled with Jesus in the spiritual realm. See, we can walk around on the earth as physical beings, but our spirits are seated in the heavenly realms. Our spirit man exists in this spiritual realm everywhere, and we are connected to the Father. Notice the verse says that we are in Christ Jesus. This means we are entangled with the Lord Jesus right now. His life is in us, and we are in Him. John 14, 20. When He breathes, we breathe. What He thinks, we can think. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. We have the mind of Christ. We are so entangled with the Lord that we can accomplish His work in the earth by His indwelling presence. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that we are entangled with God in the quantum realm, because God's Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, is not in the quantum realm. He created the quantum realm. The quantum realm emerges from a field of spiritual information that He spoke, and not even this is God. All I'm trying to point out is if everything in the universe can be entangled at the quantum level, if there is an omnipresent layer of reality that everything emerges from, why is it so crazy to think the Creator of all things, Almighty God, is present everywhere and that we are connected with Him in the Spirit? The more we study the nature of reality, the more we see that everything is connected. And the more we look at matter and the substance of space, the more we realize it's really just energy. It's spirit. That's where everything comes from. But don't ever think that God is in the created stuff. And this is important to know because when you pray, you have to know who you are praying to. You're not praying to a what. You're not trying to hum and meditate at a certain frequency to tap into divine energy. No, you're contacting a person. And he has a mind. He has emotions. Like love. He loves you. The universe doesn't love you. The creator does. So you need to stop talking to the universe and talk to the one who created the universe. So with that, we're going to bring this to a close. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.